Thanks to the support as your channel member, Owen Martin. Oh, boys and girls, we have our Creaney replacement up front. He's scoring goals and we're going to go and win the league. Hello and welcome to part 8 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have games for you in the league against Curzon Ashton and a top-of-the-table clash against Blythe. Since you were last with me, we have continued in our excellent form, apart from getting knocked out of the FA Trophy by Worthing. This was a weird one because Worthing at the time were sixth in the National League South. They've actually moved up a little bit and have a good chance of getting promoted just like we should, but it was still unexpected to get knocked out. I quite fancied an FA Trophy run. As you can see, we had a little bit of a, a wobble around here just as Creaney was being released, um, or just after released just after we fired creaney uh, waiting for waiting for new boy to come in and it wasn't until new boy henry hearn arrived that we turned our form back around again henry hearn on loan from millwall until the end of the season he's now started seven games scored four goals averaging a 7.01 rating and uh yeah as you can see he's scoring He's scoring the goals. He's picked up the mantle that was abandoned by Creaney when he was a silly boy. Um, we also signed one more guy as well. We also brought in... Hang on, why are we looking at released players? Uh, we also brought in Gio Lurero, who we're not really using because we don't really need him. He's really a Shakuna backup. Um, but he's knocking around the place as well. Um, and we let Jamie Willits go. He's gone to Kings Lynn on a free transfer. Basically, we're trying to generate as much spare wage budget as we possibly can as we head toward Premier League free transfer release day when we get that email come through. Because although we can't go and lurk around in the Premier League youth teams as per the rules of non-league to legend, if I get sent an email with 10 names on... I may offer trials to those 10 names and we want to be able to offer contracts to any of them that are any good when the time comes. So the lower we can get our committed spending against wage budget before then, the better. As you can see, there's still piles of cash in the bank. We're projected to generate even more money. So we're looking good for promotion. We're looking good financially and hopefully we'll be in a bigger and better league next year with a much bigger, much better wage budget. That's the plan. This is the league table. As you can see, 21 points clear at the top of the league now. We play Blythe in the second half of this episode and we could be pretty close to securing promotion today. I'm not sure if we can actually mathematically do it. We'll work that out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. In fact, we've got Blythe. You know what? Blythe and Scarborough are both up there with us. Kurz and, Ash Kurz and Ashton, nowhere near. I'm actually going to play this Kurz and Ashton game off camera and then we'll do Blythe and Scarborough. As the, uh, as the two matches in the episode, because why wouldn't you? They're right up there with us. They're two of the teams that can catch us. Let me just... Let me <laughs> let me just play this one off camera. I should also probably hang up my Tamworth shirt that I bought at the weekend. We'll do two birds with one stone. But it's fair to say, boys and girls, this is proving to be quite a frustrating match that you probably would have quite enjoyed to see. Uh, we've absolutely dominated relegation zone Kurz and Ashton. As you can see from the match stats, we have been all over them, but they've just taken the lead with five minutes to go. And uh, I'm quite upset about it because I don't think we've lost a game in the league since the, the that very first... Uh, the, what's it? Episode two? The first episode that had gameplay in had uh, had matches in and it looks like somehow some way we've decided to drop points here maybe the shirt is cursed because i hung the shirt up pre-match and we just we cannot hit a barn door i do not understand what i've just witnessed those match stats that i've just been fm'd worse than tamworth were in real life when i was there at the weekend well we've not won the league today have we now let's go and do the two top of the table matches. Well, that was 33 games unbeaten in the league we were before that one. And now it's all gone wrong. Couple of things. That, well, one thing that's worried me a little bit. That was the first game I've played since the update that came out yesterday. I recorded it yesterday's episode before the update. So let's hope the update hasn't killed my tactic. We're going to learn a lot over the next couple of, uh, next couple of matches. But just in case that is what's caused the problem, I've tried to counteract it by signing a player called Miles. Because I figured if we bring in a Miles, that should solve the problem. 
He's also quite a good defender. Although he's only five foot ten, similar to what we've got with Idahen, good at defending, quite short, which is probably why he was without a club. He was previously at Wingate and Finchley, where he'd played twenty five games this season and then been released. I have no idea what's gone on there, um, but he was just available on a free. So here he is. He's had a really good season and then just got slight. Imagine releasing someone mid-season. He didn't even have a hip injury. Um, so he is in the squad, not going to be in the team today, but this is the 11 for this game against Blythe. It's Mohamed in goal, a back four of Cullinane, Lybird, Ida Hen, Moyo and Dornelli, Kennedy and Milnes in midfield, Akwai, Shakuna and Finn supporting Hearn up front. I really want you to see Henry Hearn playing well because he was looking really, really good. Pre-update. We're not going to blame the update. It was just one of those games. You saw we still completely dominated the match. We were so far ahead on XG, shots, possession, everything. We were the better team in that last game. Sometimes you just have one of those games, especially when you are ever so close to securing promotion, securing that league title. You do sometimes get a little bit bottly. Oh, my word. Are you serious? Idahen gives the ball away, and luckily... The uh, the Blythe player can't can't capitalise on the situation, but I I I don't know what's going on. Why are we suddenly not very good? Hopefully, it's just a little phase. Idahem plays it to Cullinane Lybird, and now Milnes and Aquay, who turns, beats his man with ease, and there's options in the middle. One of them is her, and he's aiming for her. And, oh, I th I thought that was in. I was doing my that's gone in voice there. And it, unfortunately, has gone wide. But, I mean, that's that's a little sample of what we've been doing. It just needs to actually end up in the back of the net for me to know for sure that we're still going to be okay. But halfway through this first half, still nil-nil. It's been pretty even so far on just about every metric. We could do with a goal, please. A just-before-half-time goal would be absolutely ideal if we could, we're not even getting a highlight. what What do we have to do? to not be bad at the not not be bad at the game all of a sudden. Do we now have to guess what the new I mean it's not as if we figured out a meta tactic or anything like that. This was basically the first tactic we tried with Tamworth. It was just the logical one based on the squad that we had. It still is the logical formation for us to play with the squad that we've got. If it's now not working, we do have a problem. And I don't know if we're going to have enough about us to limp over the finish line. And if we do, that could be a disaster anyway. Because if we go up not knowing how to win games anymore, we're coming straight back down. <laughs> Please, can we do a football? We're not even playing well in this one. Neither. We're just cancelling each other out completely. There's been two shots on target in total across the two teams. This is so far away from the uh, from the Tamworth that we've all come to know and love. Miles is coming on. Miles is going to be the saviour. Savior. Ida Hen's moving out to left back. Cullen in Lybird is sacrificed. Hearn has been poor again. So we'll bring Ty Deacon on for him. We're going to offer some encouragement to the boys and we are hopefully going to find a breakthrough. There's a cross from Dornelli, but Deacon is the one who played it off short to him. So it was only a quay in the area to get on the end of it. And unfortunately, he's not quite the aerial threat that Ty Deacon is. And it remains nil-nil. We've had the better of the chances, but we just haven't really looked like scoring. It's like Curzon, Curzon Ashton all over again. There was that one chance that fell to Hearn. Right, I am going to bring on... Can Lurero play? I mean, he can't really play in these defensive midfield roles. I think I'm just going to bring him on any... No, I'm not going to be mad. We're just going to bring on Gascoigne to go in there. We've got to be sensible. We'll play the players who can fit into the roles that we've got. Let's continue doing what's what's brought us to the table and hope that this is just uh, limping over the finish line. Marath, and we've hit the post now. I don't even know who that was. Cullen and Lybird's off the pitch. I don't know who else we aim for. It pretty much is just aim for him is the typical thing. Um, I guess that was Moyo would be the obvious next one down, I think, or Deacon. Uh, but it looks like this is going to end nil-nil unless we can grab a goal here. Shakuna, who's been very, very quiet today. It falls to Finn. Finn plays it back to Shakuna. And now Gascoigne. Gascoigne to Dornelli. And now Finn into the path of Deacon. And it's a good save from the Blythe keeper. I think Deacon's offside anyway. That was our chance and we blew it. Two games in a row we have dominated for XG, although a lot of the XG today came after the 90th minute. Um, but that is two games now without a win. We are very much in, oh, we might win the league, isn't that scary mode. We could still potentially finish as low as eighth, which seems unlikely, but is still mathematically doable. 
let's go play Scarborough and hopefully beat them. Right, just the one change for Scarborough then, because it's pretty much the only change we can make. Lorero's coming in for Shakuna. And it does seem mental to be leaving Shakuna out when he's on 18 goals for the season. But he was so absent in that last match. And if you look at his rating over the last five games, his last five games, averaging a 6.72. In fact, the entire attack over the last five games has just stopped. This isn't a... This isn't an update thing because three of those five were played before the update happened. This is a we've run out of steam thing, I think. And I just hope we've got enough, like I say, I hope we've banked enough credit to get us over that finish line. Uh, but we are 16 points clear of Southport now. I don't even know if we've still got Southport to play. We'll check on that after the game. We could really, really, really do with a result here. Interestingly, Creaney is now fit again after his hip injury. Dreckon he'll, Dreckon he'll come back. Wouldn't that be a story if we hire him back just after we fired him? I doubt he'd, I doubt he'd come back. I mean, we've paid him off for the season already. He's not signed for anyone else. Really, we should be able to bring him back in because we've, we've, he's still been paid for this time. I think that's how labour laws work. Please, could we do, if we don't win today, I genuinely might go and sign Dan Creaney back, which would be one of the biggest U-turns I've ever done playing football manager. But it is Scarborough who are on the attack. And this is not what we want to see at all. And they are just knocking it around us. And they have scored. So now we have a problem because we've not scored for several matches. Can we remember how to do it? Because we need to now, or else this really is uh, the, wheel, uh, uh, the wheels are off situation. We've been so dominant for so long. We've changed nothing. And <laughs> it's all going wrong. <laughs> Only a 14-point gap now. Surely we can't throw this away. To have 85 points on the board after 36 matches of a 46-match season. To be 20 points clear with 10 games to go. Imagine throwing all that away. It's not possible, surely. Surely. Kennedy playing it back to Moyo. Moyo gives it to Milnes. And Milnes to Finn. We're taking it slowly, but we are working it forward to our attacking players. Lurero back to Dornelli, and now Finn coming inside, gives it to Milnes. Milnes has a go from range, and it's so wasteful. Why is he doing that? He's never in a million years going to score from there. Have they lost confidence in the attackers? Why not Why not get that out wide and get the cross into Hearn? That's the route to goal. Cullinane Lybird, of course, is a route to goal. He hits the post. He could seriously end up as our top scorer this season if the attackers continue to misfire and he keeps getting on the end of set pieces. He's very close there, uh, but unfortunately not able to keep it the right side of the post. And now it's going to be Scarborough with a corner of their own just before half time. They're going to do a pervert corner as well. The indignity of it. They're dancing into the area. This is hideous to see. Oh my word, Mohammed! I don't know what he's doing there. Wasn't even looking the right way. It's hit the outside of his ankle and I guess it counts as a save, but very, very fortuitous to not be 2-0 down I guess we go attacking here do we go to two up top do we bring Deacon on alongside Hearn are we trying something different I think we probably do Lorero hasn't impressed this way we can try this for 15-20 minutes and if this doesn't work Hearn can come off and Shakuna can come on and we can go back to our normal system but we've got to try something different because this this 4 2 3 1 for three matches now just isn't working anymore. We're demanding more. And hopefully, with two big strikers up top, we can get the ball out wide, get some crosses in, and really start to cause a threat. I think it demonstrates just how important an informed Shakuna was to making that 4 2 3 1 work. And without either him in the team or when he's in the team, him in form. It's almost like playing with 10 men. Maybe we go with the second striker. Cross comes in looking for Deacon, who can't keep his header down. I mean, in that situation, nod it down to your strike partner, for goodness sake. They're now do they've done a short corner. They're now playing it out from defence. This is not mine on league. I am not happy with what I'm seeing here. And even more unhappy that they're just knocking it around us with ease. They're out footballing us, and I hate that. Because I, I quite like playing nice football. I know when we've not really got the personnel to do it here at Tamworth, but it is very infuriating as a manager who would like to play this style, seeing it done to us. It doesn't matter how successful we are. 
I still want us to play nice football and we haven't this season and we don't have a plan B and plan A's stopped working and Mohamed is looking very, very flappy today. He came flying out to get onto that cross, missed it completely and it left him so out of position. They were just able to lob it over the top of him for a second goal. We've been so, so poor. I can't even explain it. Um, oh, it's it's so poor from Mohamed there. He can't get back in time. He's backtracking all the time. I mean, it's it's smart play from Scarborough, but we've got to be better than that. They're coming at us again. I guess Shakuna comes on now with half an hour to go because this changing system hasn't worked. The two strikers have both been pathetic. What do we have to do to get Shakuna to get back to his best? Hearn's going to come off. Shakuna's coming on. We're going to go back to, to this. We gave him 15 minutes with two up top. Get the ball to Shakuna. For goodness sake, we're demanding more. Please won't somebody do something. Everyone's playing poorly today. It's no longer uh, the defence are still playing quite well, but the attack have forgotten how to score. Everyone is playing poorly. And I don't know what to do about it because we don't have the players to rotate. This is the problem with having such a small squad. Colored and Liebird tired again. Idahen goes out to left back again. Miles coming on to play at centre back. But I mean, bringing on a centre back for a left back with 15 minutes to go when you're 2-0 down in the top of the table clash is no way to get back into the game. We just don't have the players to do anything any different. We're going to have to give Dan Creaney a ring. I am going to have to eat some humble pie and hope that he wants to come back. We're only 13 points clear at the top of the league now. Can we, can we rely on a returning hero who hasn't yet found a new club? Wouldn't that be a thing? It seems very unlikely. I've played enough football manager over the years to know he's very unlikely to actually resign for us. But I guess it depends how much he likes money. I bet if he does come back, it'll be on a pay rise. Oh, I don't know how he's got away with that because he was so out of position again. Get Jazz Singh back in as well. It was all it was all fine when things were going well. Now things aren't going well. Throw the baby out with the bathwater. Shakuna can't hit the target anymore either I'm, what is that an alien attack um I mean that's when you know things are going wrong our corner taker got beamed up by a UFO there well we are still top of the league Absolutely no thanks to what we've done in this episode. That has been three matches of absolute trash. Time to eat some humble pie. Dan, do you want to come back? No. I mean, his cons are skill. So maybe we're not missing too much, but... Yeah, I don't really know what the plan is from here. Um, I figured we were going to be just going through to the end of the season now, but we might be coming back a little sooner. We've won one of our last five games. This problem is it extends back further than just today and just the update. We don't have Southport still to play, but things could... Hopefully, we win our next game and then the one after, and we can just come back for whatever match we win the league in. Because that was always the plan. Things might be a little bit different tomorrow, though, if it doesn't work out like that. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.